When a student starts out at journalism school, he is taught the basics of the writing. How to organize an article, how to structure it, what comes first, and so on. Of course, the style of a standard news report in a paper has changed over time. Where at first we were treated to vivid recollections of the reporter on scene, describing everything as sort of an eyewitness report, we're now treated to more compact snippets of information, usually telling us exactly what is going on in the first few sentences. This is what we now instantly recognize as a standardized news report. Other forms of news media have adapted as well. Where news reports on TV used to be just a reporter on scene, maybe interviewing someone, nowadays the editor gets to play around with some visual abstractions, for instance. However, since we're apparently pleased with the way they look now, it has gotten a bit stale, and all news reports now look the same. It starts here, with a lacklustre establishing shot of a significant location. Next, a walkie-talkie preamble from the auteur, pacing steadily towards the lens, punctuating every other sentence with a hand gesture and ignoring all the pricks milling around him like he's gliding through the fucking matrix, before coming to a halt and posing a question. What comes next? It's even gotten so bad that we are so used to things such as, say, having a reporter on scene, that news stations will go to any length to actually make this happen. That current will take me down and pull me... Sometimes even going so far as to faking the reporter's actual position. Ashley Banfield from a parking lot in Phoenix reporting via satellite with Nancy Grace, who seemed to be in the same parking lot in Phoenix. Now, the question I ask is, can our standardized news find some fresh inspiration from other sources? And should it? There is a whole world out there of new creative ideas when it comes to visuals. I'm of course talking about the internet. Believe it or not, but there's more to YouTube than funny cat videos, though... Hang on a second. <laughs> As I was saying, YouTube has a lot to offer. Everyone has an opinion and every semi-professional with some editing skills can get his or her work out there to be seen by everyone. Most of this is done to entertain the viewer or to just get a trillion subscribers and make a ton of money off of Google ad revenues. However, there's also a lot of YouTube channels out there that genuinely try and inform us. Take the popularization of the TED channels, for instance. Though interesting, TED Talks don't contribute anything on a visually creative level. This isn't their goal, they're called TED Talks for a reason. The main focus is the speaker, not the way it's presented. Apparently, there is a large audience for this, however, judging by the amount of views they manage to scrounge together. Another reason why they are so visually simplistic is due to the fact that they need to be easy to shoot, edit and upload. Any person with a camera can provide us with a TED talk, which is the entire point. What we need to look for in order to find some new, visually creative ways to convey information to people is users that have come up with not necessarily new information, but new ways of conveying this information to us. Hobbyists. Do note, some of these are only meant as entertainment, but still contain a new format that may or may not be useful to the news. Now, the amount of uploaders and videos on YouTube is frankly staggering. I will be walking you through some of the more visually interesting ones. They might not have invented a certain style, but have at least contributed to popularizing it or perfecting the style itself. Or they're simply good examples. Number one, the webcam rant. A wise man once said that if newspapers didn't have a section of readers' opinions, the asylums of the world would be a lot fuller. When looking at some webcam videos on the internet, you can say there's a certain degree of truth to that saying. What letter does socialism start with? S. What letter does Satan start with? S. Into a gorilla, into a gorilla pit, strip themselves naked, grease their genitals, and start screaming for UKIP, UKIP, UKIP. Come and get me! Come and get me! Come and get me! Though, as with the opinion sections in a newspaper, there are often insightful things to be found. The better webcam rants can provide a new perspective on some notions, instead of just being a video of someone ranting off their own opinion. 
The main benefit of this form of content is that it opens up the possibility of presenting an argument to a lot of people. You're taking it to a larger scale. Also, since not every letter in a paper can get published, plus they always cut parts of it out, in this way it ensures that your opinion is out there for the whole world to see, uncensored. Plus, instead of just your name, people can also put a face next to your opinion. You don't even need to edit the video anymore, since YouTube now supports direct from cam uploads. It's so easy to use, we can soon listen to the ravings of your racist grandfather. Is that really what you want, America? Don't watch soccer. Don't play soccer. Don't say the word soccer. Don't do nothing about soccer. New shows on TV sometimes have little opinion sections already, but they're usually limited to a few read aloud quotes or poll results. This could also be done with short webcam responses, for instance. When allowing people to send in webcam videos of themselves, if you filter out the good ones, this gives some well-spoken people a chance to finally shine on TV. Come and get me! Come and get me! Come and get me! Number two, the web show. These are a lot more recognizable. They often take the format of standard TV shows and put them on the internet. It really is just TV on your internet. However, since you don't have to actually go through the hassle of recording and producing a pilot, which you then desperately try and get broadcasted, you can be a lot more audacious with your ideas. Who would have thought that a show about cooking food as unhealthy as possible would draw 100 million viewers in today's low-carb world, if the guys from Epic Mealtime hadn't tried that out? What up, Internet? We just beat up the pussy of the supermarket and extracted all this goodness like a grocery store gynecologist. And now we're going to cook it, because this is a cooking show. Experimenting can go further than simply the concept of a show. Take the movie review show Half in the Bag, for instance. Half in the Bag. Jay and Mike are frauds. This is a show that took a lot of inspiration from an old movie review show on TV, in which Roger Ebert and Gene Siskel would discuss a movie. Save for showing a few clips from the film, the rest of the show consists out of shot, reverse shot, discussion. The show never pretended to be more than that, a discussion that happened to be captured on film. They're both the same thing. Half in the bag is the exact same in a lot of ways, though since this is the internet, they add gags and small camera or editing goofs to the show and make it more interesting and fun. And again, since this is the internet, they're not bound by a lot of rules, eventually resulting in throwing together ridiculous extra scenes of them reenacting scenes from the movie they're reviewing. All of this leads to the show being more than what it sets out to be, taking the concept of a serious discussion program and somehow merging it with a sketch show. That is definitely the way to see it. Well, Good. what do you think of web shows? Well, I think, though they borrow heavily from the boring old TV, they also add a lot of new ideas as well. Uh, due to a lack of budget and the lack of needing to please a network, they can be a lot more creative. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when you think of how many views some of these shows are getting, shows that would have never gotten aired on TV, you, you start to think that some executives should start to realize that Familiar isn't always the best bet. Well, you know, they might already be starting to do that a little. Oh? Number three, the presented show. Another thing that has a lot in common with well-known TV formats is basically a sort of webcam rant for the people who know how to use video editing software and like to show us things instead of just their own voice. However, there is some difference, mainly in the subject matter. This last idea has actually been picked up by the BBC. They started a YouTube-based show with Top Gear's James May, completely in the style of these explainy videos, only this time it's a well-known presenter instead of some person from the depths of the internet. Though this new show is only meant for the internet for now, it gives off a clear message that TV stations are taking formats coming from the internet seriously, especially considering we're talking about the colossal BBC here. Though there are more examples of the BBC taking stuff from the internet. Another BBC presenter, Charlie Brooker, has actually asked one of the internet's most famous animators, David Firth, to take his internet videos full of incredibly random things you would never see on TV and implement them somehow into his programs. Now is the first part in our new animated serial by FatPie.com's David Firth. Congratulations, you've just bought the year 2008. Just sign here 
And here's your key ring. And here's your greatest hits album. Of course, having a presenter on screen explaining things to the audience is nothing new. Also showing pictures in the background or a few keywords on screen has been done many times already. The modern day news has also already started to incorporate little animations even. So how can they take any inspiration from this? I'll explain in the next section. Number four, video essay or review. Here we have the most visually abstract, diverse and interesting new type of video. It can vary immensely from video to video. The subject matter can be anything. A video essay usually consists out of a collection of pictures, moving images and a voiceover. However, the voiceover is the most important thing about this. In a way, it's much like a news report without any interviews. It tries to convey information to the viewer through spoken text, and this text is supported by correlating images. Clarity and context are not going to fix this, because the problems of the ending are written into the premise itself. Even the most expertly handled expansion of that premise will be throwing good writing after bad. And I'm not sure you entirely understand just how bad this is. In a news report, the images are usually related moving shots of things the voiceover is talking about. Sometimes facts will appear on this screen, and that is pretty much the extent of a news report. Images that are sort of related to what is being talked about. Now, let's take a video essay. For instance, in extra credits, hand-drawn visual metaphors support the core of almost every sentence, tickling your brain and keeping you much more involved in the process. You need a different conceptualization of the gun. First, you need to see the gun as a symbol of independence. You need to be able to view the gun as a tool that enables its owner to ensure that the expression of their will is not unduly constrained. Here, the gun empowers the man, rather than as a part of the man. In the review show Zero Punctuation, the narration is followed by a sort of comic book story, entertaining the viewer, keeping him invested. Each protagonist has a random appearance, name and job, and it can be quite demoralizing when you spend several hours as Zack Danger, private eye, only to make one stupid mistake and then get stuck with Fat Bob, the fucking community support officer. In the big picture, pictures of what is currently being discussed are shown, plus supported by an easily recognizable face that shows what the voiceover really feels about what he's currently talking about. Binder is one of the great legends of the gold and silver age of comics who doesn't get nearly enough recognition today, mostly because he tended to specialize in the kind of decidedly more whimsical material that several decades of gritty modern fandom have tried to memory hole out of existence. For example, he also created or co-created Beppo the Super Monkey, Titano the Super Ape, and Crypto the Super Dog. In the Plinket movie reviews, images from the part of the movie that is currently being discussed are supported by still images to accentuate certain important things. It's like George Lucas finished the script in one draft, like he turned it in and they decided to go with it without anyone saying that it made no sense at all or was a stupid, incoherent mess. Next to that, he combines it with live action segments as well. Get out of my popcorn jar! Video essays are getting very big online, with the best garnering millions upon millions of views. And do note, in general, these are just voiceovers with some still pictures in the background, but for some reason, audiences find these both watchable and informative. Video essays present an incredible opportunity for someone who wants to share information and combine it with a simple way of video making, which causes his or her story to resonate with viewers just as much, if not more, as a standard style video report. TV news could easily incorporate this style into its current broadcasts sometimes omitting the use of semi-related background shots if no better ones are present, and instead adding a still picture of something perfectly describing what is currently being said. News on TV is not meant to entertain us, but there's more ways to convey the information to us than the way it's done now. The rigid way news shows adhere to this visual style leads to ridiculous situations at times. Where documentaries already borrow heavily from the film industry, so could news reports borrow from, say, the video essay. Apparently a bunch of pictures in a row holds people's attention just as well as a video that goes on in the background, though the focus of our attention should be the voiceover. It's not always possible to find the shot that completely matches what is being said, and the more the shot is different from what you're hearing, the less people will understand it. Since the visual style of a news report is not as important as it is in a documentary, Switching to a still picture that matches the voiceover perfectly should maybe be considered as a viable alternative.